what is up checking out this uh carrier unit that i want to use for the smaller footprint you can see how narrow that is compared to these units rv gate right here i need to knock this out and make it a little wider but i can barely get my trailer through here when i do it by hand and i can't there's just no way i could back it in with the truck or anything like with something on it like a car or the can am so i want to make a little more room i got a pair of these things without you know all the indoor units to go on them and i just want them for the footprint and for the cabinets to probably just put my scrolls in here so i do want to use the oem fans got the plastic fans in there and whatnot so um right now i'm kind of messing with some wires in here just to kind of see what i could do i kind of saw some five volts and then some speed signals over there pwm took a chance just to hotwire some five volts there to see if they would tell this board to or pass through the speed but it didn't so i know i could do it from over here because i've already successfully controlled this fan uh with the indoor fan it wires just the same so right now i'm unplugging the speed 0 to 6.5 volts off and i've got just a couple resistors and a potentiometer in there and then i'm basically taking the voltage which actually comes from this inverter board which is goes to these three phase dc motors i was hoping they had the built-in controllers because i just control the motors direct but it doesn't so i need to keep this um basically motor driver in there for these two fans but it works with this type of uh, control, just like the, the motors with the built-in circuitry. So I have a hot wired so I can give it a voltage speed command. Watch for sparks or smoke. I actually do have a little fuse on there just in case, but see the fans are rocking. There it goes. My idea is probably just to put my scroll compressor in there, pipe it into a single circuit because this is a four circuit and i'm just gonna um i just want to hijack the fans you can just see the fans are running 4.6 volts um 6.5 will be full speed so i'm varying just a, a potentiometer just to send voltage back into it so that's full speed there yeah it's blasting some good air twin fans man that'd be nice so should be able to just control it. Oh yeah. It says one to 6.5 volts. So one volts I would think would be the, the slowest speed it could go. Might even be stopped. I should have taken the grill off so you could see the fan a little better, but. Yeah, so one volt's pretty much nothing. It does say. Oh, this actually says zero to 6.5 volts. I thought I saw one of them said one to 6.5, but one volt seems to be nothing regardless. So if I get this up to about two volts. Motors are rocking. Goes. Just can't even hear them run there. They're just running nice and slow. Nice and slow. Can't get up to three volts here. Yeah, that's how we do it. I'll just leave it right there so it's nice and quiet. So, yeah. I wish it was simple as that to send a signal into this inverter board for that rotary compressor because then I would just keep the rotary compressor in there. <laughs> but I don't think there's going to be any such luck. I do see that two pins on that board say RX and TX, which would be receive and transmit. So it's probably communication. But it does have some other, it has like fan PWM1 and then. Uh, and then it says like fan speed or something like I think one's a command one's a reference and this is fan two Which is weird. It says fan one and fan two because guess what this both these fans on here Control on one board with one input so it, that board can't control this one by itself. So I don't know 
I tried messing around just putting some voltage into it um, from the from its own board there, and nothing came on. But anyway, I probably want to keep it pretty simple with my variable frequency drives that I have, and just put the scrolls in there. So I have the scroll I put in here. This has been running on variable frequency drive for two years now, and then I have an identical scroll right here. <laughs> brand new unit that was a takeoff for some issue I think they couldn't figure out with a something so as far as I know this compressor worked <laughs> you can see it's 2019 it's but it's I just took it out sealed it up pressurized it got the wiring with it and everything and it's this is a match to that compressor so the idea is to actually make is just to bolt that in here take out all the extra piping just use the coil Use, oh, I'm gonna probably just use the reverse valve that's in here already. And it's a 230 volt coil, but that's no big deal. I'll just run a relay. And then uh, I'll just make my own little fan interface. So where when it's in heating, the fan goes up to 100%. And when it's in cooling, I might uh, give it a little range, like where it starts, you know, like this. Like, like a low ambient, but I don't need a low ambient because we don't run it that cool, you know, residential. but. Just so, you know, it maybe starts out low and then I'll have a thermistor or something so it ramps up just to do it. Other than that, I could just tell it to go to full speed, you know. Who knows? Which would be real easy. So I think I could just take the voltage out of here, go to a circuit board, um, and then use some optical isolator and just feed it a pulse width modulated um, signal from one of my microprocessors and just easily, easily control these fan motors. Four volts gets that second ripping pretty good. I should probably put an amp unit on here just so you can see it. I bet you these two motors aren't going to pull out that much power compared to a AC motor's five volts. By the time it hits five volts, it seems maxed out. So I just need to worry about pretty much a. Uh, closer is two to five volts for the range. get an amp meter okay well this is kind of stunning according to this those two fans are drawing 3.8 3.9 amps and, huh. they're moving a lot of air and who knows it could be getting those kind of screwed up readings because it's in front of a rectifier, you know how that goes. It's three point, what was that? Almost 3.9 amps at 230 volts AC. That's just crazy. That's about the amps, you know, you get on one of those motors. It's real quiet and it's um, moving a lot of air. I mean, just standing in front of one of these blows pretty hard and there's two of these. So I guess uh, <laughs> maybe, this, maybe these things never actually, hard to ever have to ramp up that high after all. Cause that, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like 1.4 amps right there. said sometimes reading in front of a rectifier is kind of a with this these kind of meters it just kind of so I think sometimes they read kind of high because that's blast in air I mean come on that's way more air than this is a three ton unit it's way more air than this three ton unit span moves I mean look at that freaking blast and so I'll have to experiment with the uh, 
what kind of speed I need once it's actually running. Kind of see the point of no, you know, return. Or what's the word for it, you know? Once you, uh, you know, you've got the liquid temperature dropping down and then you keep speeding up the fan, you know, across the fins. Diminishing return, I think they would call that. You'll probably get to a point to where running it faster doesn't actually help. So maybe right there is all it would, all it would need. And that's much more conservative value there. So the way these fans work, gotta be careful not to let any wires touch and pop anything, but there's a inverter board under there. And it basically is three phase DC, synchronized DC output. So there's two, one fan, there's the other fan. So this board's powering these. And this uh, board sending the, you know, 330 volts DC, you know, from the rectifier up here. I'll keep that rectifier in here. And I'm just going to go right straight from there to the other board. If there's any, there's a capacitor on there, so I should be able to just dump it in there without these. If not, I might add a capacitor just for that. And then I have my own, um, my variable frequency drive. I'm just going to bolt in here to run the scroll compressor. Anyway, I've been needing to hook this up just to make sure I could run the fan, and I successfully did it in about 30 minutes, so that's pretty good, but that is because I've already had, I mean, you can see I printed this out a long time ago, so oh, from working on the head unit, I already figured out how all the wiring works, how the feedback signal works, all that stuff when I interfaced uh, the carrier head unit, one of the head units to this, interfaced it with my Frederick VRP, <laughs> so I know how the signals work, just... Damn, wish I could freaking command that thing to run the compressor. But, oh well. Anyway, this is going to be another Frankenstein project. Um, because that one's running and then that Goodman's R22 system's got to go. First thing I'm going to do is put that scroll in here, get this one up, ready to go. And then what I plan to do is when this one's ready to go, just put it in place of this one that's running, pull it out, have the first one of these right here working, and then um, I'll take the compressor out of this one, put it in the other one of these, you know, do the same thing. So they'll be identical, um, two-speed scroll running 40 hertz for Y1, you know, and 60 hertz for second stage. Yeah. And then uh, if anything ever happened a long time, or, you know, if I ever wanted just to, if I ever sell this place or something, I could either throw some, re you know, regular <laughs> condensers back in here, or I'll just throw, you know, either leave them, or maybe just throw an unloading scroll in there. And, that, you know, and then uh, at that point, it would pretty much work like normal for whoever had to service the units. They would shit their pants when they opened it, but, <laughs> you know, who knows. Depends on who comes out and inspects the house, you know, when you sell it. But yeah, I gotta. So here's your. Uh, this is a four circuit. You know, this unit has like four one ton or you know circuits or whatever. It's a three ton unit total, but you know what I mean. I think these are paired up. They were paired up. There was like three one tons on it. You can run three ports and leave one not used if you want. And that's how I guess this was installed. So that's what you have there. One, two, three, four, A, B, C, D for power and then your ABCD ABCD for bridge and ports here up here's your two main ports hoping I can repurpose some of this but that's 5 16 so I don't know I might have to see if I get a pair of ball valves so I can have some shutoff valves just depends so anyway Frankenstein project coming up. I do got to get on it a little bit before uh, summer will be here before I even blink, and then I'm not going to want to do it then. So don't forget to what? Like and subscribe. Share. Catch you guys later, and uh, hopefully we'll get this working without letting all the smoke out. <laughs>